Right folks, it's summer and it's the season of the fern. They've come into their own now. you never believe it, like a few months ago I was out and there was no ferns, they were all right down there. This is, this is a signpost coming up now. Uh, one way you go back, you go to Holford if you go that way. Thanks for some cloud cover everyone. I really needed it. Thank you. Thank you. So that goes to Holford if I went that way. And I'm sure there's a walk from Holford to Kilv. So you don't have to do much road apart from cross the main road. I haven't discovered it yet because I haven't looked. But I'm going to find it. Because that would be a nice walk to go around that way and then end up... As it is, I'm doing this way, the longer way, which includes um, a co the coast. Includes the coast. So where we are, it's a little trickle of water. There's the way back to Holford, if you want to go that way. Perry, A39, which is where I've just come, and I had to cross it back by the cottages. Coleridge Way. And Smith's Coombe, which I've been up and down. I did that, I think that was last year, or it could have been the year before. I think I did it last year as well, I came down it last year. So there we are, it's just beautiful. It's a, Smith's Coombe is a beautiful, peaceful coombe, by the way. It really is. With the stream. And it's, it's absolutely beautiful, that walk. I'm deliberately doing this one because I'm going to end up, I'm doing a circular in reverse to what I did last year. And uh, I'm doing it this way. I know I've done some really hot walks across fields a minute ago, but this way, the sun won't be ahead in front of me going this way, right? And I'll have trees, but there will be exposed areas. Now up there we've got a load of bees, so you don't want to go roaming up there. Beehives. <sighs> oh, I can take that hat off for a minute. The hat, though it protects me from intense sun, it also makes your head hot. So when I can, I just take it off to let the follicles on my head breathe. This is the Coleridge Way, by the way. And uh, I've done it a few times, of course. It's a very undulating... It's a, it's, it really is undulating and it get curves in and out. It follows the curves and it takes you much longer than if you were right on the top and walked from A to B. But it's a lovely walk. Obviously, if Coleridge and Wordsworth did it, I thought I'd do it at the start of the walk. But it is up and down. It's probably the hilliest part, so I thought I'd do it at the start. I'm not saying there aren't any hills on the way back, because there are cliffs. And the only thing I forgot to check was tide times. <sighs> well, I'll worry about that later. <sighs> I'm sure you can walk away from the beach onto certain areas. Alright, so I'm making my way up. This is just a short video. I've just come up from East Quantock Head. Two fields, cow free. Absolutely lovely. The steepest field, lovely, quiet cows, allowed me to go up, back, and up for forgetting the camera. I think that's only ever happened to me once before. I wasn't going to carry on the walk without this camera. This is a £350 camera. It's not a lot to professionals, I know, who pay thousands. It's a little mini Sony, and I've got two of them. But I wouldn't want to lose this one. This is my best one. It won't matter if I drink a lot of water, because when I get to West Quantock Head... There's a pub there, there's houses, and then when I get to the coastal bit, there are farms there, and I will ask for someone to fill my water bottles up. So if I have to drink all the water, and I've got quite a, a lot of it, and it's heavy, plus I've got a fruit juice, 
two oranges, packet of uh, hoops, packet of cheese nut type things and round ones, some slithers of cheese, a nice big juicy tomato, one dairy lee which will be a big gungy mess when it's uh, found. I'd already had a ham and salad roll in the van just before I left for the walk, which gave me indigestion. But I thought I, I thought I'd had breakfast this morning, yogurt and cereal. I didn't have toast. Um, I thought to myself, yeah, top up the glucose. It's not just water you need. You've got to keep the energy levels up. <sighs> So at 67 years of age, and having been found positive for Lyme, so though I don't know, I still am, because they whacked me with a load of antibiotics for three weeks. That might have killed off a, a recent one. So I might already have it anyway, from years ago, which is still a theory of mine. I'm waiting for another result to come back. I don't know if it's the Western blot, but there are some specific... I do know, they said, I didn't have the really nasty one associated with limes. Because limes associated with various bacteria. Um, and although it's a bacteria, it can create these long-term conditions. That's why they call it a disease. I don't really know if it is a disease. I mean, it's a bit like malaria once you've had it. Apparently you still get times when... You're going to feel tired, naked in that. But I've been getting out. I felt really good this last week. I've got some wipes in my bag to keep off uh, mosquitoes, hopefully horse flies. Um, you put a wipe them on your ankles, up to behind your knees, your arms, on your back. They last about four hours, so I'm probably due for a wipe round uh, at some point. Like I said, the sun is to my left there at the moment, and there will be times on this path that I'm going to have to put up with it. But what I'm going to do in a minute, when I get to a big tree there, I'm going to stop. Make sure I put the camera in my pocket which I normally do, have a nice big gulp of water. I don't feel like nothing to eat at the moment. I might have a fudge. There's some lovely trees here. I don't know if they're commemorative as well. But uh, I had to walk through grass earlier and that's, that's always a worry. I had to run those on that hill. But look at the shade I've got here, everyone. So, although people will sell your mad, Sheila, I think, well, I'm doing it in such a way that I've got the sun to that side, not be, not in front, right in my face, and I've got shielded by trees on the hottest part of the day. So, basically, I think that's a sensible thing. And... Uh, when I do the turn at West Quantock Head, which won't be for a while, I've got to do a bit of weaving yet. When I do the turn at West Quantock Head, the sun will be, as I turn, the sun will be still sort of this way, but it'll be more behind me. So I won't be facing it on the way back along the coast there. Uh, if I zoom in, I'll show you where I've... I don't know if you'll see Alberta. We might even see Alberta yet. There's uh, the church I went in a good hour ago. And the other side of those trees, there's a little car park. There's Alberta, look. There's Alberta. That's where I'm parked. And I've left supplies in there. Water, bag of crisp, Kit Kat. Um, hot water for a cup of tea when I get back there. It's a beautiful, beautiful place just to park up and have a read. I, I nearly brought a book, but I don't know how long this particular walk's going to take me. So here I am. I am on the Quantocks. I didn't make it. I think I made it for the start of June. 
But least I can say I got up here for July. And it's nearly the end of July. I, I got a feeling I got up here either the very last day of May or the 1st of June. <sighs> but I was also doing coastal walks, which I classed as embracing the, the Quandocks from a different view. So I counted that in June, yeah. Right, over and out. <sighs>